All righty. Um, welcome, everyone, to the final leg of our Salon Skits digital webinar series. Um, today, we have Ashley Rushton from Rushton Marketing presenting on social media advertising. Um, a really wicked follow-up from our session we had on Tuesday. Um, just a bit of housekeeping for the session today. If you have any questions throughout the session, um, please send them through to the Q&A box in the bottom center of uh, your screen. We'll be recording the session, so if you do have to leave early or you know of someone who would find you know, this uh, session useful or you want to catch up on any of the information you might have missed, and we'll be able to share this with you in the follow-up over the coming days. I would now like to hand over to Ashley uh, to take over the show. Cool. Thank you, Michael. Um, thank you everyone for joining me. Um, very excited to teach you a bit about Facebook ads. Um, it is a weird and wonderful world, um, but man, it's so worth it when you get it right. Um, what I'm going to do is share my screen with you. Just bear with while I remember how to do that while we're here. And make sure that you can see the proper version of it. All right. I'm going to go ahead and assume that you can all see that okay. If you can't, um, please let me know. It would help if I went back to the beginning of the slide. <laughs> Hang on. Let's go back to the beginning of the slideshow, right? Let's not jump ahead. that will be cheating. All right, here we go. Now <laughs> we're in the mic on. <laughs> You can't oh, see the slides, geez, actually. Louise. All right, here we go. Let's go from the beginning. And swap that around. Can you see that okay, Michael? Yeah, we're on. Okay. Guys, we're away. <laughs> Technical difficulties there. Okay, we're away. All right, so today we're going to talk about social media advertising. A little bit about me. Um, I've been in business now for this is my sixth year. Um, our main objective is to provide outsourced marketing expertise to small and medium businesses around Canterbury. Um, I spend about 90% of my working day now looking um, down the abyss that we call social media. So we manage social media pages for clients. We also set up some um, advertising campaigns for clients as well as doing one-on-one -on -one and group training as well. Okay. If you are wondering who the hell I am and what qualifications I've got in teaching um, Facebook ads, I just want to share a few of our recent success stories with you. Um, so first off, we've got Bourbon Rose Florist in Christchurch. So we did a lead generation Facebook ad for her during the level four lockdown. Um, in the first seven days, she had had six inquiries. Um, she'd spent $73 on her Facebook ad in those first seven days and she'd made a ton in um, sales from that. Um, also during the level four lockdown, we did an ad for Owen Patterson hypnotherapist who was running online sessions for stop smoking, which you would think at the time it's quite stressful for people. Um, however, he spent $250 on his Facebook ads and he got 78 inquiries as a result of that. We also set up um, some advertising for Laser Electrical Ashburton here. Um, they hadn't done any Facebook ads before in the first um, six days, they'd had 13 inquiries as well. Um, another example for myself, I spent $400 on a Facebook lead generation ad and in three weeks we received 21 leads. So it does work um, and it works around a, um, a whole lot of different industries as well. No matter what your audience is, chances are you're going to be able to find them on Facebook and Instagram. Okay. This morning we're going to cover um, ads manager introduction, so how to get there and what ads manager is. We're going to touch on campaign objectives as well. We're then going to head into target audiences where we're going to spend a bit of time um, sharing the, the amazing power and the amazing capability that Ads Manager has got in terms of getting in front of your target audience. We're then going to talk about Ad Creative and then we're going to jump into understanding the results so how you actually figure out if your ads are working or not. After this morning, I really want you to be able to leave this webinar knowing how to set up a simple Facebook ad campaign. We're just going to kick off a little bit around the difference between Ads Manager and Boosting, okay, because they are different um, and probably a lot of you out there have boosted ads in the past. Um, a boost is basically when you put a post in on your business page and then you get um, the little blue button that says boost. You can type in a few details and then you're basically um, running it kind of a simple ad. Ads Manager is different, okay, so here's a quick comparison. So a boost is a um, is as I said is the simplest way to advertise on Facebook. What you're doing with a boost is you're basically paying for more reach or you're paying for more eyeballs to see that piece of content. 
So this can help improve your brand awareness or your post engagement, but a boost just isn't equipped to bring you powerful return on investment. Um, with the ad side of things, so in ads manager, there's more advanced results driven solutions in there, okay? You can hyper target your audiences and there's really, really measurable return on investment in ads manager, okay? So that's kind of the, the um, quick difference between there. What I'm gonna do is we sort of get into each module as well and just is just put up this quick slide that says Q&A and that's when I'm then gonna jump through to that uh, Q&A box and answer any questions that we've got sort of come through. So I'm gonna answer them as we go along while they're fresh in their mind. Um, just gonna quickly jump in. Perfect, okay, I think there's no questions yet, so we're all good. All right, let's hone into Ads Manager. Okay, so what is Ads Manager? It is a free all-in-one ad creation platform within Facebook. Your ads that you create in Ads Manager will run on Facebook, Instagram, Messenger, and Facebook's audience networks, okay? What that means is, um, say for example, you are on your newsfeed um, and you see a news story for stuff. Say for example, you click on that news story and you're actually reading that article within the Facebook platform, but Facebook ads will appear on it. So that expands your reach that way. Ads Manager is designed for everyone from beginners right through to experts. At the end of the day, Facebook wants you to make money from your Facebook ads. So they need to be doing a lot of the legwork um, and making it simple for DIYers to get in there and actually create an effective campaign as well. Every personal Facebook profile will have an ad account. However, it is business best practice to use Business Manager with a separate ad account. What you're going to do is, um, and you can do it while we're sort of moving along today, um, these slides will go, um, these slides will get sent to you afterwards as well, so you can always jump back in and follow your way through. But how you're going to get to Ads Manager is you're going to open up your normal newsfeed, okay? This is on desktop as well. You're going to find this little yellow, um, or this little down arrow in the top right hand corner, and then you're going to click on Manage Ads. Now that's going to bring you to a screen that looks a little bit like this. So this is your overview screen, okay? If you've ever boosted a post before, you will see the results for these appearing in this overview page as well. Um, you're probably going to see, um, you'll see there my account number at the moment is 95407631. Um, you will probably see perhaps your name there and a wee profile picture or something there. Okay, so when you're going into create an ad, you're going to look for that bright green create button that I've got here circled in yellow, okay? You're going to click on that. Now with a campaign in Facebook Ads Manager, there's a structure to it, okay? The first tier or the first level of a Facebook ad campaign is your campaign level, okay? So in this level, that's where you select the objective that you're wanting to achieve from your ads. Um, we will get into these in a bit more depth, but I just want you to understand the structure of a Facebook ad campaign. So on this level, you will select whether you're wanting people to visit your website, whether you're wanting people to message your page, whether you're wanting people to just see your brand um, and get that, you know, spread the word as far and wide as you possibly can, okay? The next level down in our ad campaign structure is the ad set level. So in this ad set level, you, you select options based on your delivery priorities, okay? So this is where you'll select your target audience. This is where you'll select your budget. And this is where you can also select your placements and your schedule. Down from that is your ad, okay? So this is the actual ad creative. Um, this is where you will upload your images, your videos, things like that. And this is where you'll also write your copy for your ads, okay? Now you will notice as you go down, you'll see that campaign breaks off into two ad sets and then those two ad sets break off into two different ads within the one ad set, right? So a campaign can, and in most cases it should, contain multiple ad sets and multiple ads. So when you're doing a Facebook ad, you don't just have one version of your ad that goes out to your target audience, you can have multiple versions of that ad. The reason for that is you might want to test different audiences to see who responds better at the time. Um, you might also want to do th change the design and the copy of your ad as well. So for example, the ad that you show to your male demographic or your male target audience might look a bit different to the ad creative and sound a bit different than the ad copy than the ad that's getting shown to the female demographic or the female audience, okay? Um, you can speak to different types of people as well, test different visuals to see what works better. 
but basically what I'm trying to say is that you don't just have one ad running at any given time in your ad campaign. Okay, are we ready? Let's do this. First, I'm gonna answer some questions. So I see one that's popped up. Hi Ashley, Michael's screen is still showing on the bottom of the screen, we can't see you. Oh, that's a bit sad, how do I fix that? I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm after that. You can just look at the presentation though. I'm, I'm pretty boring compared to what's on the slides, I promise. It's good. It's less pressure for me too if I know you're not all staring at me. <laughs> all right. So we're going to get into campaign objectives. Okay. Someone can see me. Okay. So I'll have to make sure that I'm on my best behavior then and sitting up straight. <laughs> all right. So campaign objectives. We mentioned before about that top tier of your campaign, right? So Facebook will give you 11 campaign objectives to select from when you first come and set up your ad. As you can see, these are broken down into three categories. We've got our awareness, we've then got consideration, and we've then got conversion, okay? Um, if you get to this page and you think, well, what the hell does brand awareness mean? Or what the hell does catalog sales mean? You can hover over that option. Um, you'll see this little gray, um, you see an eye and a little gray circle up here. You can click on that and Facebook will give you a definition of what that means. So you can go through each of these and select the option that best suits your business requirements, okay? Again, coming back to that point that Facebook wants to make it easy and um, really achievable and make Facebook ads work for everybody, right? Because then you're going to spend more money with them. So this is just an example of how they do that. They're pretty good at explaining what their different terms mean. I have also on this slide um, broken down these and given you um, the quick description as well. So you can always refer back to these. We're going to touch over a few. So under that awareness category, we had reach and brand awareness. So reach is basically when um, the Facebook algorithm picks up your ad and shows it to the maximum number of people in your audience within your budget. Brand awareness is pretty much the same, but it does take into account the previous ad engagement from your audience, okay? So it will show your ad to those who are more likely to pay attention. Under that consideration bracket, we have the likes of traffic, which is pretty self-explanatory. So that's an ad that um, directs people through to your website or your app or your messenger location. Um, you've got things like video views. So that shows, shows your video to people who are more likely to be interested in and watch them to completion. Um, you've got the likes of messages there, which will prompt people again to open more messenger interactions. So if you've got people in your audience who are always messaging pages and spend a lot of time in messenger, your ad's then going to be shown to probably more of those people because they're familiar with interacting in that environment. Then you have your um, conversion options at the bottom, okay? So driving valuable actions on your website. So if you're wanting people to sign up to your um, e-newsletter, if you're wanting people to buy things, book now, all that sort of thing. Um, we've also got catalog sales. So this is ideal for e-commerce, okay? So this links to images of every item you sell online and Facebook will display different items to different people based on targeting criteria or how they have engaged with ads in the past. You can also use um, conversion objectives within Facebook Ads Manager to drive visits to your brick and mortar store as well. Okay, so don't think that your brick and mortar options are, are, are out of, off the table when it comes to Facebook Ads. Okay, any questions and answers there just yet? Okay, so we've had someone ask, which is more effective, Facebook ads or Google AdWords? Um, look, it really depends what your objectives are. It depends who your audiences are. Um, a lot of our clients are running both in tandem. You've got to think too that um, if you are going to Google search something, you're going to be typing in those keywords first, right? You already know that you need the product. You know that you need a new, um, phone or a new hoodie or whatever it is, so you're going to Google to search that because you So it's kind of getting into their sub subconscious before and creating the need for them. Okay, so um, both are effective, obviously. It just depends on yeah, your type of business and your audience that you're trying to get in front of. Hope that helps. Alrighty. There we go. Okay, so that sort of covered that objectives um, area. Thing, the objective that you select in the um, first bit of your campaign setup is going to influence what you see moving forward down that structure, okay? Let's talk about audiences. I get so excited in this area. Okay, so audiences are selected at the ad set level, so your second tier down. You've selected your objective, now you're getting into your audiences, okay? 
you can target people that you don't know and you can target people that you do know. So you can also target more than one audience in a campaign to determine which type of customer is more responsive to you. There are three ways to target audiences in Ads Manager. First off, we've got your demographics. Then you've got custom audiences. And the third way you can target people is through what's called a lookalike audience. So now we're going to drill into each of those areas a bit deeper. We're going to kick off with demographics. So in a demographic audience, you can build your ideal customer based on their gender, their age, and their location. It's pretty straightforward, right? You can also build your ideal customer based on their qualities. So based on their education, their financial, their life events, their parents, their relationship, their work. You can also um, build your ideal customer within this area based on their interests and their behaviors. So if they are frequently buying items online, that would fall into here. If they have shown interests in um, particular skincare products, or they've shown interests in business, or interests in rugby, whatever it is, Facebook basically has profiles on each and every one of us. They know what we're interested in, they know what we're clicking on, they're following us everywhere. That is then how we get in front of these people that are important to our business, okay? Um, I always use the example that I heard um, at another workshop that I went to, and it was about the guy who was engaged for ages on Facebook. He got married, updated his um, marital status to married, um, and the very next day he woke up and there was an ad for a divorce lawyer on his news feed because that divorce lawyer knew that he'd changed his status to married, married <laughs> and that he may be in need of his services soon. Um, so you can really, really hyper-target people through this. I've got some examples here of ads that we've got running at the moment with audiences. So here is an audience example based on the demographics of um, ad for rush to marketing, okay? So you can see that I'm targeting people who live in Canterbury between the ages of 30 and 60. You can see that my target audience are interested in small business, self-employment, business or home business. You can also see that they've got their job titles. I've targeted based on job titles, where their job titles are listed as business owner, owner managing director, own business, managing director, self-employed or managing director. Okay, so I'm forming my ideal customer. I just want to spend my hard-earned cash advertising to these people because they are who are going to convert into my customer. If we look at another example here, this is for um, a florist in Christchurch. We are targeting people, or well, brides to be effectively, for wedding flowers and that sort of thing. So you'll see the age is a bit different here. So we're targeting a woman aged 20 through to 35, um, who have shown an interest on Facebook, you know, all things to do with wedding. But we've also got that set up in there um, for people who are engaged, people who are newly engaged within the last six months, people who are newly engaged within the last year, newly engaged within three months, but we've also got friends of people who are newly engaged. So if your friends just got engaged and then you see an advert pop up on your newsfeed about wedding flowers, you're probably gonna tap them in it, right? If you think it's something worthwhile. Um, another one here we've got, now this is a very, very simple one. There's only a few interests in here, but it was really successful. This is for a online children's shoe shop. They're selling shoes, children online. Um, now the interests in here is online shopping or shoes, they are stay at home parent, um, and they've got preschoolers aged between three and five. So we had the copy or the text in the ad really speak to those stay at home parents um, with preschoolers. Um, another one we've got here, this is for a lawyer who has opened a um, firm in Rolleston, um, and we were wanting to reach out to the real estate agents in the area. Um, so it's things like, you know, they've got their employers listed as real estate, they've got their job titles in there as real estate broker, real estate agent, all that sort of things. We're forming that ideal audience. Let me know if I'm talking too fast too, just type it in the chat box. <laughs> all right. So that is um, all the different ways that you can target people based on their demographics and their interests in Facebook, okay? Another way you can target people is through what's called custom audiences. So this is where you can reach people who have already shown an interest in your business. So if you think of your demographic audience, that's your cold audience, right? They may not have heard of your brand before, you're just sort of going out and chasing them because they're probably interested in what you've got to say. A custom audience would be reaching out to your warm audience, right? So they already know the brand, they already know the, the purpose that you serve, it's just getting them to convert, okay? So you can create a custom audience based on all these different sources here, you can see in the middle. The four that we use the most here at Rush for Marketing would be website, customer lists. You can actually upload your customer list into Facebook. 
and then create a custom audience of your CRM or your customer list and then show Facebook ads to them. Um, Instagram business pages and Facebook pages as well. So you can pick up your audience from Facebook or from your Instagram profile um, and create an audience and shoot it out to them too. We are going to talk a little bit about this website um, source. So this is through what's called the Facebook Pixel, which some of you may have heard about. Um, it's super effective and if you take anything away from today, it is please, please, please get your Facebook Pixel up and running ASAP. Alrighty, let's talk Facebook Pixel. So Facebook Pixel is a code that you embed into the back end of your website that tracks your visitors, okay? It takes visitor data from your website and it pushes it through to Facebook so that you can run targeted Facebook ads to those people. Here's how it works. So an internet user visits your website, your Pixel fires. They leave your website without making a purchase or answering your call to action. Your Pixel follows them through to Facebook and shows them your retargeting ad. Your ad recaptures their attention and hopefully increases the chances of conversion. They become a customer, happy days. So we've all had it happen, right? We've all been on a website before or Google searching something and then we've gone to Facebook like an hour or even a couple of days later and we've seen an ad for that exact same product that we were looking at but didn't buy. And we've gone, well, how the hell did they do that? That's how they did that, okay? So they've done that through the Facebook pixel. You do want to install this before you start running any Facebook ads as well because you want to start collecting all that data of all those people um, and then start retargeting through to them, right? If, you, if your pool of people in your Facebook pixel is too, too small, um, the ad's just not going to be as effective as it could be. Okay, and this is basically how we feel, right? I don't know who you are, but you visited my site once and so now I will find you and then find you again and again and again. It's brilliant for people like me. I am, I work full time. I've got a three year old and a two year old. So I'm always scrolling and like getting interested and excited about things I find online. But then someone starts crying or the phone rings or something happens and I don't buy. And it's not because I didn't want to, it's just that I didn't have a chance at the time. So if I then see your retargeting ad, two hours later when I'm laying in bed and I can't sleep, <laughs> then it's going to inspire me again and motivate me again to pick up my phone and actually make that purchase. Alrighty, where to set up your Facebook pixel? So I've put a quick step-by-step um, -step in here on how to actually get in and find it. So once you're in your ads manager, you're going to go to events manager. You're going to first off click, sorry, this um, yellow circle here. You're going to click on this little grid and then you're going to click on this events manager button here, okay? It's going to take you through to a page called data sources. There's going to be a button in there that says add new data source. You will then follow the step-by-step -step instructions on how to install it on your website. Um, if your website is through the likes of um, like WordPress and Wix and things like that, it's generally quite an easy step-by-step -step process. Um, or you can just, there's a button in there that says email instructions to developer. So if you've got a web developer that you deal with, you can literally just fire the information over to them and get them to do it. Or give me a call and I can walk you through the steps as well. I have also put a link, again you'll get the slides for this presentation after today. Um, there's a link in the bottom there too if you need any extra help. All right. The Facebook Pixel, it's important to note, does come in two parts, okay? So you've got your base code Pixel and then you've got your event code. So the base code tracks all visitors to your website regardless of their behaviour, which is fine and you can roll with that if you like. If you're wanting to get a lot more, a lot more specific with who you're targeting and what they're wanting to buy, then you're also going to want to set up the events codes, okay? These come in two two formats, if you will. There's a standard event, which is basically a list of events or actions. Actu events and actions is the same thing, right? Um, a list of standard events that Facebook will recognize. So this is things like clicking on buttons on your website, um, viewing the entire content on your website, viewing particular URLs, adding to cart, for example. People add to cart, but they don't complete the purchase. Um, adding to wish list, things like that, okay? Customers, if you've got anything sort of outside of that normal scope, you can actually set up specific custom pixels to put on your site. Okay, so this is where people take action on your website. There, you can chase them back in. Um, when you add these to your pixel code, you can log those standard events, optimize for conversions and build audiences. Okay, so say for example, you have an online store, 
and you have say you're like a restaurant and you've got a menu loaded like a PDF menu or a menu button on your website right you want to retarget ads to people who have just viewed that menu because they're obviously quite interested in you they're obviously going out for dinner soon um, because they're looking at the menu right they're getting options so you want to show that ad to just those because they're hot property at the moment you know it's probably this weekend they're going out for tea so you can set up a um, standard event on that menu page or on that menu button and then retarget ads to just those people does that make sense it basically gives you an option for higher conversions okay you know every dollar that you're spending um, has maximum chance of actually giving you the return on investment I hope that makes sense following on from that okay so thinking of um, how that custom audience work there so what if you could place your ads in front of people that look like your existing customers so what if you could take everyone who clicked on that little restaurant menu button and then target everybody else who looked like that person and was potentially going out for dinner this weekend as well. You can do that and you do that through what's called a lookalike audience. All right, so lookalike audience are ways to reach new people who are likely to be interested in your business because they are similar to your current contacts. So this would fall in between that demographic audience or interest-based audience that we talked about to begin with, would fall in between that and your retargeting pixel audience, right, okay? Because they're cold, they've not heard of you before probably, but they share similar attributes to your current customers, so they've got a better chance of converting at the end of the day. All right, so what it basically does is a lookalike audience uses information from your source. So it could be your client, typo, if anybody spotted that, could be your client list or your pixel audience it finds common attributes from those um, and it builds a new audience of people who look like them so say you uploaded your farmer crm with all your farmers that are listed on it right and you said i want to find more farmers like these because they're bloody good guys to work with they pay your bills on time and i just like them right you can upload that CRM into Facebook, create a lookalike audience of all the other good guys, all the other bloody good farmers that look like that, and then target your ads out to them. Okay, there's a couple of things to note though. You do need to have um, a source audience of at least a thousand people for this lookalike audience option to be effective. Um, so get your pixel in place ASAP, um, start collecting all that data. Um, you can advertise people on your pixel up to 180 days beforehand, right? So in 180 days time, you can be targeting people who are on your website today. Um, and you then have more data in that 180 day time slot as well to kind of play with and find your lookalike audience. Okay, so get your pixel in place. Um, and everyone's thought about this. So me thinking and then an ad for what I'm thinking about pops up on Facebook. Okay, any questions so far? I don't think we've had any, this is good. Okay, let me know if there is any, any questions, just pop into that question and answer box um, and I will answer them best I can. All right, so that is, um, yeah, all the, the weird and wonderful ways that you can target audiences on Facebook. Obviously, again, we're uh, halfway through this morning's session as well, so we have just kind of scratched the surface. Um, it's basically to give you a good general overview of the amazing things that you can do with an ads manager and then hopefully you can get in there and have a plan. Learn more as you go. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the, um, the creative aspect of your Facebook ads. Okay, so I said before, your ad campaign objective determines the ad types. So when you select your objective in the beginning, it influences a lot of the steps that you're going to have along the way moving forward, right? And one of those things is it will determine the ad types that you have available. There are 10 different ad formats that you can select from. Today though, I'm just going to touch on three of probably the most popular and the most easy, or the easiest to set up. We're going to talk about photo ads, video ads, and carousel ads, okay? Photo ads, so these are really, really quick obviously to create. Um, if you've got a tangible product that photographs real well, you can use that in the ad, you don't have to overthink things too much. Um, if you've invested in a um, professional photographer to come on and take photos, obviously you can be using those as well. A recent, recent Facebook study showed that photo only ad series outperformed other formats in driving traffic to websites. So while it's quick and it's easy to create, it's also really effective, okay? Um, a quick tip, use people in your ads so that they feel native to the social environment. So bearing in mind that people are using Facebook to connect with people, not to be sold to by businesses, 
if your ad image has people in it and faces and it looks like a, um, a relationship or it looks like an emotional connection, it looks like the other pieces of content on their newsfeed, they're more likely to be at ease with the ad that's getting um, shown to them effectively. Um, there's a lot to be said as well for white space on a newsfeed. Um, as you're scrolling through your news, it's so, sometimes it's so overwhelming, these texts and these images and these things moving and these sounds blasting. Um, so never underestimate the power of white space as well. Okay. Um, always make sure that the image quality is high and that your photo actually fits the size um, for the different ad placements. So I have put a link on the slide as well, which has got all the dimensions in that for all the different placements. Um, quick, another quick tip, um, use Canva for any design templates. Um, if you're not using Canva already, quickly download it on your phone. It's basically a whole lot of um, graphic design templates where you can swap out images, swap out text and stuff. Um, there's a whole lot of different size options in there as well. So you can pick up, you know, Facebook ads and that sort of thing. Um, if you are in need of any high resolution images, please don't go to Google and pinch other people's please go instead to either Unsplash or Pixels, Pixels, sorry. Um, there's a whole bunch of royalty-free, high-resolution photos that you can be grabbing off there. Um, of course, you've got your other ones like your Shutterstocks and stuff too, if you've got subscriptions for those. Okay, a couple of things just to bear in mind. So less than 20% text in your image, please. So there is a rule um, that Facebook have around text and images, and if your image has too much text, you will see a decrease in reach. This is an ad I mentioned Owen before at the start of this presentation. So this is an ad that we've got running for him with Stop Smoking. You see that the text takes up overall space in that, and there's a lot of empty space around that cigarette as well. So again, it's bold and it stands out in the newsfeed. Um, I mentioned too at the beginning that you, you can have more than one ad running within the, the one campaign. Um, so here's an example of an ad that I've got running at the moment for Rush to Marketing. So this is retargeting everybody in my Facebook pixel who's been to my website. And it's basically, you know, telling them to come and book an online consultation. So I've got these three visuals running at the moment, the white coffee cup, the pink coffee cup, and then the neon words. What that basically lets me see is what um, visuals my audience are most attracted to at the moment. And as you can see in the middle, that pink coffee and plant has got the most reach. Okay, it's also cost me a little bit more, um, but it's got the most reach and the most clicks. Okay, so obviously the indoor plants at the moment are super trendy, so that's going to you know grab people's attention. Um, it's quite simple in design as well. There's not a lot of clutter going in and around it. Um, the neon words probably is the worst because it's got too much damn text in it, but I just thought I'd try and see what happens. Um, so that is why you would do um, more than one ad photo just to you know see what works better. I now know that you know, ads moving forward need to look a bit more like that pink coffee and plant option, okay? Alrighty, let's talk video ads. Okay, so generally you get better reach with anything video on Facebook, video is king, okay? You, your ad needs to be a minimum of, um, your video, sorry, needs to be a minimum of one second, um, and it can be a maximum of 240 seconds. Generally, we'd say aim for around about 30 second long video is the ideal. 80% um, of people watch video without sound. So please, please, please um, add subtitles to your video if you've got people speaking in them and their speaking is kind of important, right? Um, I use a online website called Capwing to put my captions in. You basically upload your video, it auto-generates a bunch of captions. I always go through and double check them because sometimes with our Kiwi accents or people talking too fast like me, um, their captions get a bit out of sync, so you can then manually go in and do that. Um, if you're using your phone to capture video, don't hold it like this. You want to hold it like this. Okay, hold it horizontally to take the video. Um, you can also have video as part of a carousel ad, a collection ad, and a slideshow format as well. Alrighty. We're going to talk carousel ads now. So this is one of my favourite, and I use carousels a heap. Okay, so with a carousel ad, you can showcase up to 10 images or videos within a single ad. Now, each of those cards in the carousel has its own link, okay? It's really great to showcase more than one product, highlight different product or service features, or tell a story. 
if your carousel isn't in a sequential order, so if it's not, um, you know, one, two, three, four in order, um, you can auto optimize the delivery of your carousel to show so that Facebook will show the best performing card first. Okay, so Facebook are tracking um, how many clicks each card within your carousel gets, and they will then show that most popular one first as people are scrolling through the newsfeed. Okay, here's an example of a carousel we've got running at the moment for myself. So it's one of those, you've probably all seen them. Um, and actually my photo is performing the best, which freaks me out. All right, here's one that we had running for another client. So this was showing just different aspects of them that the office was open with the address, their faces again. And this is one that we've got running at the moment for Urban Rose. I don't know how I turned the torch on my phone when I picked it up before, there we go. Okay, so we've got the different products for her on there with their prices and then a buy now button. Okay, so people can actually go in. When they click on that product, takes you through to that specific product on the website, then the pixel picks them up from there and chases them back to Facebook, right? Pretty cool. Alrighty. Just wanting to make a bit of a note about the Facebook ad library as well. So if you are struggling for inspiration or you're wanting to have a wee snoop around at what your competitors are doing in terms of Facebook ads, you can go to this Facebook ad library, which is basically where you can access all the active ads that they've got, um, even ones that you may not have seen because you're not within the audience. So I've put the link for it there. So it's just facebook.com forward slash ads forward slash library. You report to a page like this, you'll type in whoever you're wanting to check out, um, and then all of the active ads will appear. So you can have a wee, a wee snoop around that way. Okay, any questions and answers? I can't see any. Hi, Ashley, there's a few questions that have come through, but I think we're I having a few technical that. issues. Uh, technical okay. issues. So I've saved the questions and I'll share them at the end. Okay, cool. All right, sorry guys, I did wonder. <laughs> okay, is there any that maybe need to be addressing straight away or no? Might jump out of this. Um, I can share my screen now and go through them if you like. Oh, it's, oh shoot, I've had a thing. Zoom meetings is not responding. <gasps> oh dear. I'm just going to click wait for the program to res Can you still see me? I can see you. <laughs> Can you see my slideshow? Um, yep, we're at Q and A. Okay, great. I might just carry on then. Um, but just so you know, it has whited out and it said it's not responding. So <laughs> we'll carry on until um, if I crash and disappear, um, we'll figure it out. When we get there. <laughs> Here we go. So are we still with me? We're on reporting. Okay, okay, all right. I'm just going to carry on. All right. Okay, so let's talk reporting. So you've set up your campaign, you've selected your objective, you've got your audiences organized, you've done your creative, you've put your, all, your ad out into the wild and it started to run on Facebook. And then how do you actually know if it's working or not? I mean, other than your phone ringing, right, and your online sales happening, how do you know if your um, ad is working? Okay. So what you're going to do is you are going to Go into that um, first overview page that we went into. So that was your little down, your down arrow on the top right hand and then um, manage ads. You're going to be brought back to this overview screen, okay? All of your ads are going to start appearing in here. I've also put a link on this slide um, that will help you sort of navigate a little bit of these columns. But basically things to look out for is first this date here. So you can view different date ranges. So you can look at the last seven days of results, um, or you can look at the lifetime of results, or the 30 days of your results, or even just yesterday if you wanted to. Second thing just to note is to um, that columns bit there. So at the moment it will default to performance, which will show you things like um, reach and impressions and cost per result. You can click that button and change those columns. So if you're wanting to see um, your cost per clicks or anything like that, that will all be located within there. Um, another wee handy tip is to hover over any of those words that are appearing along that top line and a description of that term will appear. Again, coming back to 
Facebook wanting to make it easy for everybody to understand and operate Facebook ads. Okay, that is how you would um, look at things on your desktop and that is how I would recommend because there is a lot more information on there. However, there is also a Facebook Ads Manager app that you can download. Okay, it's available in your App Store and your Google Play and all that sort of thing. So this doesn't offer the full functionality or reporting of your desktop Ads Manager, but the aesthetic of the Ads Manager app is a lot easier to digest. Okay, it makes understanding the data a lot easier to kind of look at and a lot easier to understand. Um, and in fact, I will often use screenshots from the Ads Manager app to show my clients just because it looks a bit prettier. It's less overwhelming. All right, a couple of stats to watch as well. Okay, so the average click-through rate for all Facebook ads across all industries is 0.9%. Okay, lawyers have the highest click-through rate on Facebook ads sitting at 1.61%. Um, retail, 1.59%. Apparel and beauty are up there as well as fitness, okay? To work out your click-through rate, you take your clicks, you divide it by the number of impressions that you've got, and then you times it by 100. So just a nice way to kind of benchmark and see how your ad is actually performing. Um, another thing just to know is that at the moment, the average cost per click for Facebook ads across all industries is $1.72, okay? The average conversion rate for Facebook ads, again, across all industries is 9.21%. On average, Facebook use, an average Facebook user clicks on 11 ads per month. That's one every three days. Women tend to be a bit more trigger happy than men. So women click on 14 ads per month, whereas men click on 11, uh, 10 ads per month. And lastly, the average cost per, that should be 1,000, you can tell I was finishing this off late at night last night, I apologise. The average cost per 1,000 impressions is $7.19. So what it'll cost you $7.19 to have your ad shown to 1,000 people, or 1,000 times really. Pretty cheap. Okay, and that is me. And I hope you are still with me because my screen is still gone white. Uh, <laughs> hopefully I can get to your questions and answers. I'm just giving it time to respond. I wonder awesome. if I can well, stop. Ashley, sharing. I can read out the questions for you if you like. We'll try screen share them myself. Okay, that'll be cool. Cool. What we'll do is we'll stop participant sharing. Um, and then I will screen share these questions here. Awesome. Can everyone hear? Can you see the questions here, Ashley? No, I can't see a darn thing. Hang on. Okay. What I'll do is I will read them out to you. Okay, cool. Um, so the first is, hi, does the audience also cover Instagram or is it just Facebook? Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. So, um, yeah, whenever you advertise with an ads manager, that ad will also show across um, Instagram um, platforms or Instagram placements. Um, yes, and that audience is built for Instagram as well. So it will show to those sorts of people across Instagram and Facebook. Awesome. Um, question number two was, does it cost less to target a smaller audience, i.e. just mums between a certain age? If not, um, why not yeah. just target that ad to everyone and see what works? It's not cheaper um, if your audience number is smaller and sometimes it might cost you actually more. Um, what I, the thing is too, if you um, put more and more interests and stuff in that audience, the number's actually going to grow because you're going to pick up sort of any outliers as well. Um, Sometimes it's a matter of having a play as well to see what audience works best for you. Um, that example that I showed early on for the, it was like start home parents and stuff, there was hardly any people in that audience, um, but it actually outperformed ones where we had really specific information. Um, so sometimes it's a matter of trial and error and just seeing what works best for you and your business. And things change as well. Things have changed a little bit with COVID. Um, it's just kind of an on ongoing test. Yeah. Cool. Um, is there any point in using FB or Facebook pixels if you do not have a product for sale on the website, i.e. Um, a plumber or other services? Yeah, totally. Yep, 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 yep. 
Um, I have pixels right across my website. We've got clients who are, heaps of clients who are service-based who have got pixels. Um, the thing is too that, say for example, you're, if we use maybe Plumber for an example, it's all that brand awareness. So if I am searching for you, or your ads are popping up on my website and I'm then going through to your website, um, your pixels picking me up, following back to Facebook and showing me your ads three, four, five, six times again, when my pipes burst in the middle of winter, I'm going to call you because you have stayed in the front of my mind. Awesome. Oh, yeah. um, one of the questions was, and I think we have covered this now, um, what is the cost of Facebook advertising? And there's another question there also that ties in. Um, how is the cost determined per ad? Okay, so minimum spend in ads manager is $5 a day. Um, so you can start at that $5 a day ad spend and see what sorts of return you get back for it. Um, during this um, COVID crisis, we've seen the cost, sort of cost per clicks and stuff come down a little bit. So it's cheaper to advertise on Facebook at the moment. Um, most of my clients, in fact, we've sort of started them at that $5 a day just to sort of see how the ad performs and then we've scaled it up and put a bit more budget on. Um, that was, sorry, the first bit. What was the second bit to that question? Um, and then the mm -hmm. other was how um, is the cost determined per ad? Okay, so um, when you set up your campaign, you will say, right, this campaign, I'm quite happy to spend $200 on this campaign, right? there is a little button in there called campaign budget optimization. So if you were going to have more than one ad set within that campaign, the campaign budget optimization will make that budget fluid, right? So it'll, um, you might spend $50 on this ad set and none on this ad set or a few hundred on this. It, it kind of keeps that budget all the way through. You're never going to spend over $200, but it's basically getting Facebook to do all the work and get your budget to work as best as it possibly can between those ad sets. Awesome. Cool. Um, the next question is the IT team won't let me add Facebook Pixel to our, to our website. They say it's a security issue. Um, what do you advise? Stick to Facebook ads alone? Yeah, you can still be running Facebook ads for sure. Um, that's an interesting one though. Um, lots of you will have noticed that pretty much any website that you go to at the moment, you'll get the wee cookie pop up. Um, and that's basically what that's covering. It's saying, look, we're tracking you. We know that you're here and we're probably going to follow you back to Facebook. Um, so I'd perhaps just push back with them a little bit and say, hey, you know, I really want to try this pixel. I know it's going to be effective. Can we have something in there? Um, yeah, that's kind of odd. Cool. Um, and then I don't as yet have a website. Is it still worth me advertising on Facebook? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Get people to buy through Facebook. Yeah. You don't always have to direct traffic out to your website too. So with that um, lead generation objective that was on that campaign slide, um, what that basically is is someone fills in their details on a form within Facebook. So they see your ad, they click on the get quote or whatever button you've got there, um, they fill in their details and their name, address and their phone number and then that comes through to you. So then you pick up the phone and call them. So they don't even have to leave the Facebook platform to become an inquiry for you. Um, you can have on there a send message button as well. So if you don't have a website, you could have a send message. So people just message you straight from that ad. Excuse me, you can have people um, going through to your Facebook page to start building your Facebook audience. Um, yeah, it's not essential to have a website. The, the beauty of having the website is, you know, that, that pixel and that retargeting side of things. But you can do some super clever things on Facebook without even sending people through to a website. Awesome. We've just had another one pop in. Um, what is the name um, of the app to download um, with the templates? Um, and then also the name um, of the sites to go for legal images. I think they may have missed out on those two, uh, those oh, two cool. parts of the question there. Excellent. So Canva is um, the app to download for graphic design and templates and stuff. So it's C-A-N-V-A in Banana. Um, and then the royalty-free stock image sites that we use a lot are Unsplash and Pexels, which is P-E-X-E-L-S. Um, and you can go on those sites and type in lawyer or law firm or cows or marketing or whatever you have got to sell, you can go to those websites and type those keywords in and a whole lot of free images to use will pop up. Um, which are very generously donated by, by the photographers. Awesome. Uh, just another question that's popped up. 
are we better to run shorter campaign at a higher budget per day or a longer campaign at less per day? Um, a longer campaign at less per day. So when you first launch your ad, it goes through what's called a learning phase. Um, the ad needs to get 50 conversions to bring it out of that learning phase. But basically during that time, um, Facebook are trying to work out what auction bids and what audience members and all that sort of thing are better to give you better conversions. So the longer you run that ad for, we'll at least get it out of that learning phase, right? Um, so I would, yeah, be inclined to start at like $5 a day or $10 a day, whatever you're comfortable with. Run it for kind of even just four weeks and then look at it and say, right, this ad's working well, this audience are responding, um, these ones are not, let's turn that off, let's throw more money into this audience because they're really active at the moment um, and then make those changes and scale the ad from there. Yeah. Awesome. Are there any other questions coming through, guys? I can't even see myself anymore. I'm too scared to touch my computer in case everybody disappears. All right, what I'm going to do, I, I think we're all done with the questions here, which is great, is I'm just going to try to stop my share and start my video. Um, and then we've got the video sort of there. If I stop the share. Cool. Um, so sorry for the technical difficulties, everyone. Um, what I will try and do is uh, make sure we've got the recording. The recording seemed to work on my computer all right which was great. Um, so hopefully that um, means that our recording that we put up onto YouTube will have um, everything running normally. Thank you so much for coming along today. And if there are any last minute questions, please feel free to fire them through while I'm um, just running off a quick spiel. Um, but thank you so much for attending um, our Sell and Gets Digital webinar series. Um, we've had a whole lot of amazing topics which you can go and view through our social um, media platform, so on YouTube. Um, and you know, it'd be really great to get your feedback as well. So I will send a follow up um, to this and we will, um, yeah, we'll have the recording. If you've got any other questions, um, we'll be able to forward them through to Ashley as well. We do have one last question that's popped up. Um, can we push an advert into a community group on Facebook? No. Um no. Not, not into the actual group itself, but you could um, potentially take your ad and target people who are more likely to be in that group. Could do that. Sometimes with a um, interest-based audience, when you're typing in, you know, like what they're interested in, that sort of thing, sometimes you'll get lucky. And if you type in that actual group name, the group might pop up. Um, and you might then be able to target everybody who's in who's in that group. Um, but sometimes it's a bit hit and miss. It doesn't seem to matter how many follow I've tried to target people who are in JBK groups and stuff, um, but she's not come up. Um, so sometimes it's a bit hit and miss. So um, yeah, have a wee play around, but you can't put your ad into the group, but you can potentially target the types of people who are in the group. Um, another thing you could potentially do is use your ad copy to call out those people. So in the text, you could say, um, you know, hi everybody in the such and such group because then if you're in that group, you're going to see that and go, oh, you're talking to me? What do you got to say? Um, so you could potentially work it that way as well. Awesome. So are there any last questions, guys? I promise I'm way better at Facebook ads than I am at doing the Zoom thing. <laughs> That looks like um, that looks like all for the questions. Um, so yeah, thank you so much for attending, everybody. Um, and we will be sending out a feedback form. So if there are other topics you'd like to cover, um, other you know webinars or, or sessions that you would find um, really interesting, please let us know. Um, and just to answer that question at the bottom, um, when will it be on YouTube? So we will hopefully have it on YouTube um, by tomorrow. Um, we will download the recording from the session and then send it off to our comms team. He'll do a bit of editing and then we'll, yeah, hopefully have it by tomorrow. Um, so yeah, please, um, please let us know your feedback. Um, and if there is anything you'd like to cover, let us know. Um, and we can definitely look into that. Um, thank you so much for attending everyone. And I will finish up the recording now. And thank you so much for your, for your session, Ashley. It was awesome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks guys. Cheers guys.